What is important is that we make the next step now into writing what's wrong with this team. We have a creed that says what about adversity? Adversity is here. We persevere and we thrive. We say that every day before we go out. Turn up, baby, turn up! The end of the 2012 calendar also marked the end of a brutal early season road schedule for the Oakland University men's basketball team. But before they could turn their focus to 2013, the Golden Grizzlies took one more bus ride west, this time to Ypsilanti. And what they found on Eastern Michigan's home court was confidence heading into the start of conference play. We had an opportunity, you know, to get a good win. Um, you know, it's right before conference play. We really tried to lock in and Plus, it's, uh, it's another school that's, uh, you know, in the state of Michigan, and, you know, we like to take those as, as uh, little challenges. It was huge because uh, they was on undefeated at home. They just came off a big win beating Purdue. I think it just gave us some confidence going into our conference play. And we had to come in there, and we were struggling a little bit on the road, so that was a huge game for us, playing a team that was hot, who was on fire, and uh, going in there and getting that win was very huge for our team. We needed that. We needed that. Boy, did we need that. And there are reasons we won the game, and obviously, you know, the little things in that weren't them. But because you were solid def defensively, because you rebounded and did those things, you gave us a chance, and then, you know, Raphael and, and Bass, you know, were Superman out there and came to our rescue. Mm. Hey, you know, I mean, conference is just a whole, a whole new uh, ball game, you know, I mean, it's... That's what it all comes down to. It all comes down to that tournament at the end in March. Um, but, you know, conference play is really important, uh, really important to gain confidence. You want to peak at the right time. You want to get there, you know, right in March when you're playing your best and, and for the, hopefully those three days in the tournament. Everybody plays 16 games. Everybody plays the same schedule, home and away. You play the same. And so you want to prove that over time you are the best. Knowing in the back of your mind the only thing that really matters is that those three days in March, that tournament. But from a coaching satisfaction point, you want regular season champions because that's how you define your program. All right, so you get in those league games and they mean everything. We know that every team that we're going to play in conference is going to be a tough game. Um, conference play, that's how it is, no matter what conference it is. Um, and so um, we, we have that mindset that, you know, we have that focus and every game is important. The summit schedule opened with a familiar challenge. Four of the first five games were away from home. But a road win against IUPUI in late December set the stage for a rejuvenated Oakland squad to return for their first home conference game against Omaha. Bass all alone, rises up and throws it down. Gives it to Bader who's all alone for three and Travis Bader sticks the three. Don't stay here, get here and score. Carter with the jam with two hands. Bader's alone for three, rises up and sticks it. Travis Bader. Oh uh, man, Omaha game was a fun game. Uh, we had a lot of you know energy and enthusiasm. The arena there, the, the fans were you know excited to finally have us for you know a home game, and um, we really fed off their energy. And uh, you know we had a couple dunks that game and. You know, it, it just felt good. Um, I think everybody got in the game too, so it felt good to have everybody involved in that game. I think I had it going that night. I think everybody did. Uh, it's finally good to be home, so I think we played well with that. We're a very good defensive team in spurts, and we've got to learn how to play 40 minutes of defense. And, and I thought that we played really well at times against Omaha. We scored the ball extremely well. We shot the ball, which is something we hadn't done well on the road. So it was good to get home and make shots and feel good about ourselves. And so, again, at our level, as much as you want to win league championships, as much as every game seems so important, it's only three games in March. It's all that matters. When you're at a, in a one-bid league, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to build so that you're as good as you can be in February. And, you know, that process is still going on for us. All right, let's go, baby. Good job today. Turn up on three. One, two, three. Turn up. And I, I, I'm a big believer in the biggest, strongest wins. I want our bodies big. A 
string of tough away losses in early January emphasized an important theme for head coach Greg Campy. For a mid-major like Oakland that spends so much time on the road every season, it takes endurance to remain focused and competitive through a grueling season. And while his team's focus had shifted away from strength and conditioning in recent seasons, it was high on Campy's list of priorities heading into the 2012-2013 campaign. Everybody's focused on being huge now. Uh, guys are 17, 18 years old, coming into college 240 pounds. So if you don't have those kind of guys on your team, you have to be able to be as big as them. Me as a player last year, I wasn't this physically built. I wasn't able to take uh, body contact. Uh, I, I don't think I was this much in shape. So this year, it helped us as a lot as a team to uh, finish games strong, not to get winded so quick and uh, absorb body contact. It makes you uh, durable, uh, make you last longer through the uh, long season. Time. Next man up, ready, begin. This is the face of Oakland's new commitment to strength and conditioning. Sam Brown played college football at VMI, also known as Virginia Military Institute. He also worked with a football team at Virginia Tech. So when you hire a guy with a military and football background, you get this. Uh, it was intense, you know. Everybody kind of kind of looked at Coach Brown and was intimidated. The guys, uh, they think I'm intense at times. More important than anything else is it gives me structure. We don't come in and waste a lot of time. Uh, we come in with a clear, concise goal, accomplish the goal, and get out. Brown took over the strength and conditioning program for the basketball team last summer, and his marching orders from Coach Campy were simple. I think what he really wanted us to do was, as a team, become a lot tougher, tax their bodies, put them through things that are a little more mentally challenging. We had kind of gotten away from that and more into the, you know, the science of, of being good instead of just get your body big, you know. And I, I, I'm a big believer in the biggest, strongest wins. I want our bodies big. So Coach Brown went to work, and there was a lot of work to be done. When I got here in the summer, they obviously didn't have a lot of background in strength conditioning. They were, they were all pretty skinny and scrawny. You could tell they wanted it. They wanted to get bigger and stronger and more explosive. Weights before practice, before the season, going through a variety of drills and exercises. Even during the season, they lift weights before practice. Uh, what I've asked them to do is put a lot of weight on the bar. Uh, you know, we got to say, if the bar ain't bending, you're just pretending. The results speak for themselves. And there's no better example than Travis Bader. Before he had some toothpicks for arms, you could clean your teeth with him. Now, you know, he, he looks like a college athlete. I wasn't the strongest, I wasn't the biggest looking guy, and still not, but you know, I'm working on it and I'm trying to get a little bigger every single day. Not only are the Grizzlies bigger, they're also better. From the guards to the bigs, everybody seems to be reaping the benefits of all the sets and sweat. Every single person, you know, starting to eat right. Uh, they work hard in the weight room. They don't cheat reps, uh, so everyone's doing well, and they love it, and they like the what they see in their bodies. You really do see everything that Coach Brown's teaching us translate onto the court, and whether it's just range of motion, whether it's getting to a ball quicker, whether it's pushing around somebody or not being pushed around, and, and boxing out better, you, you see it on the court. I think that it's not only helped me. Um, you know, as far as being on the court and physically being able to push people around, but I feel better um, cardiovascular, like responding. Going through uh, this season, I've really been able to, you know, tell the difference within, um, like my legs, for example, my legs don't get tired anymore. It's been a great emphasis for me for my last year um, to be able to make some changes to my, to my body physically, and um, I think I've benefited. Amy's going to update us on Syria, right? Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. So pretty much like Coach Becky said, um, with Syria, uh, there are rebels. Returning to the arena in mid-January for a four-game conference homestand, 
the Golden Grizzlies were well aware of the opportunity before them to even their conference record and tip the scales back toward the win column before the end of the month. While a win against Kansas City accomplished that first goal, a tough loss at home against South Dakota re-emphasized the tests that the Grizzlies were facing looking ahead to the remainder of the schedule. In my job, uh, mental toughness, because it's a long grind and you have to have a short memory. You have to stay focused and, and you have to stay focused on the next play the next play, you know, what's the next play is because you can't change anything that's happened. So how smart are you that you can uh, use what's happened to become better? Drive the ball towards Bader and screen. Well, we just know that we have to take everything that the coaches are teaching us and everything that we've gone through our experiences and just use that to, to make us better people. Um, you know, you have to learn, you know, whether it's from hearing things or going through experiences or going through trials and tribulations um, in your life to become the best person you can be and you know it's no different on basketball court when we go through um, times on the court where we, where we miss shots miss free throws or turn the ball over we have to you know next time we're presented in those situations have to learn from them and, and make changes so that we can be successful this year amid the pressure to compete the fact that these athletes are also students is sometimes overlooked but at Oakland University, those inside the athletic department are well aware of the importance of not just strength of body, but also strength of mind. At Oakland University, the athletic department prides themselves on building graduates and champions. Okay. In nearly two decades, all but two student athletes who played for Coach Campy all four years have earned the degree. We tell each kid, you know, you're coming here and you're using your basketball skills as a vehicle to get an education. It's a message ingrained in the minds of his current players, especially the freshmen who are still trying to find the balance between school and basketball. School is very important. Uh, it makes you a, a more rounded person. Uh, you can't just, I mean, you can only play basketball for so long in your life, but you don't know, what to say, knock on wood, you blow a knee out or you tore ACL or something, and then you have nothing to fall back on. So education is very important. Uh, and getting a degree is too because after basketball, what else? Players spend several hours a week here at the Student Athlete Support Center called The Grizz. It's a quiet place to study and get their schoolwork done before and after practice. My parents put a big emphasis on, on school. Um, you know, I've already graduated. I'm uh, going on to my master's right now currently. And, so my, my parents have had a big influence on that. You know, they always told me school first, anything could happen. I could you know, get injured at any point, something that happened with basketball where it doesn't work out in the future. So my parents just really, really pushed me and to this day they're still calling me and are you on top of your schoolwork? What do you have going on? What's, you know, stuff like that. The women's program is also focusing on helping athletes prepare for life after basketball. B, slap the floor. B, slap the floor and take defense. Coach Francis even started a new program this season, requiring her players to do current event presentations in front of the team every few weeks. She's going to come back and update us on what's going on in Libya to just to continue this series of international foreign policy, current events, so we know what's going on in the world and we're not just so focused on basketball. It's all yours, Zakia. All right. So the last time I did my current event, Libya was it's helped me a lot because most of the time I'm so busy with basketball, school, work, and stuff like that, that I'm not able to take the time to watch the news and see what's going on in the world. So this current events thing is a great way for me to become aware of what's going on. It also helps them with their public speaking. They, I do this on purpose, so they have to present in front of their peers, and that will give them practice. So when they have to present in front of donors or at a banquet or in front of a class, that even one more time that they had to do it, it will help them with their confidence. It's always just to be successful after basketball. I mean, we love this sport, and obviously we're going to work very hard every day to be good at what we do now, but it's also for what we want to be in the future. You know, we like to go around here and say that the athletic department at Oakland University's grade point average is higher than the general students, which it is. So the mission is graduates and champions. I had that feeling where anything I, I threw up there was going to go in. Our strategy is about us, all right? 
We need to understand where we're at as a team and what we're playing for. Well, the bad is out of the way. The good has to start, and it has to start somewhere. Let's start tonight. It isn't about our competition and who we're playing. It's about us. For the Oakland University men's basketball team, the trials of late December and early January set the stage for two all-important games in front of the Arena faithful. The first offered a chance to sweep IUPUI. This team was, you know, at a crossroads for the season, and we, uh, we needed our players to step forward and, and play. The focus is just staying together, uh, planning within our roles, listening to our coaches, and just trying to figure out to win games at the end. Take him out. We're going to go back. Yeah. Bader with another three. Bader hits another three. I just remember it being a special night. Um, I remember coming out the game and just looking up on the scoreboard and seeing how many points he had. And um, just to be on the court for, for an amazing performance like that is something I always remember. Bader for three. Hits through again. Travis Bader. I had that feeling where anything I, I threw up there was going to go in. Um, you know, my teammates did a great job of finding me. Uh, they did a great job of getting me open in transition and getting me open in the offense. With a school record 11 three-pointers and a career-high 47 points, Travis Bader led the Grizzlies past IUPUI 89-71. It was the third highest point total for a player in Oakland history, highest since moving up to Division I and at the time the most by any Division I player for the season. For those 47 points, there were a lot of great screens set and some perfect passes that he caught right in his hands and, and buried. And, and uh, he did make some tough shots too, but it was definitely a team thing. The, the team just fed off him, knew he had it going, or knew it was one of those nights, and they just got him open. We shot in the 60s, that ain't always gonna happen. But I do think we took that step. And we're gonna get ready for Western. I'm not gonna try and motivate you. I'm gonna just see, are we gonna move forward? Are we going to take a step and then take a step back? Or are we going to learn from the day and go forward? I thought today was really good, except for a few minute stretch. Really good. The way we have to play if we're going to win a championship. A performance that set the stage for a chance at redemption against conference leaders Western Illinois two days later. And a potential career milestone 500th win for Coach Greg Campy amid a homecoming celebration. Sellout crowd, TV, an opponent that's first place of the league. It's not important. What's important is us. What is important is that we make the next step now into writing what's wrong with this team. We have a creed that says what about adversity? Adversity is here. We persevere and we thrive. We say that every day before we go out. Valentine driving and using the glass nicely. Bader, follow a three, got it. Step up and make shots. You all shoot enough. Everybody here deserves to make it. There's nobody here that hasn't put the work in. So step up and make it. Petro's drawing contact. And Hochus using the glass. Here's Bader off a of curl, fires up a three. Cowboys! For Team 46 this year's team, that was a really big win. Uh, probably the biggest of the season. When you beat the league leader 
and the league leader played a good game. It wasn't that we played, you know, out of our minds and they played poorly. It was just a really good basketball game, and we competed toe to toe and came out winning. It's just a great, great confidence boost for us to get that game. Um, you know, it shows we're making strides, we're making uh, steps in the right direction, and. Uh, you know, I was, I was just happy that we got the win. Congratulations to Greg Campy. Not only does he win number 500, but he does it against the top team in the league. Oakland hasn't lost a league game in the last month of the season since 2008. And there's a reason for that. We get better. And that's what you guys are doing. And tonight's the marquee win we needed. We needed that win against a really good team, and they're a really good team. All right, and you beat them. After that game, I really just thought about all the amazing players that have you know, played at Oakland and have paid the way for, for us to be in the position we're in now. Um, I just feel so lucky to you know, be at the school where you know, they started off from a D2. And it's just amazing that Coach Campy has you know, made so much progress in su such short time. And I think it just shows how great a coach he is. That's the ball. Yeah. You know, 500 wins, you know, there's not many coaches that, you know, can say they have won 500 games. And so, you know, to, to play for a coach like that is something really special. We don't talk about individual awards, and that's just not our mantra or what we do as a team. I will say this. It means I've had great players. We've had a lot of really good coaches come through here. I've been blessed with great coaching staffs. It's just been a family that has produced really good people. And I think that that's just the proof of it right there. And I will say, I said this after the game, that, you know, the proudest fact of it is it's all come at Oakland. Catch Oakland basketball at the arena. For tickets to all Oakland basketball games, call 248-370-4000 or visit OUGrizzlies.com.